If you take the early internet, it faced a lot of the same skepticism that cryptocurrency faces today. Oh, that's that right. little mark with the A and then the ring around it. At. See, that's what I said. Mm -hmm. um, Katie said she thought it was about. And then yeah. it sounded stupid when I said it. Violence at NBC. So Allison, can you explain what internet is? Luckily, we had enlightened policymakers. You know, the Clinton administration put out their framework for the, for the information superhighway. And they said, no, we can't envision what this is going to be ultimately used for, but we know there's potential here and we're going to allow it. We're going to let the private sector lead. We're going to put you know, reasonable guardrails where it makes sense. But otherwise, we're going to let American entrepreneurs do what they do best, which is innovate on open platforms. And luckily, they did that. And the U.S. basically owned the Internet Revolution. You had to have a country that had a First Amendment, a Fourth Amendment to allow for something like the Internet to really flourish. So something like the internet or something like open permissionless cryptocurrency networks cannot flourish in China. They can't flourish in places like France and Germany that don't have a first amendment. Really, the United States is the place with the values to make the most of this technology. And I think our policymakers really have a responsibility to live up to and have the courage of our American convictions to make sure this stuff can reach its maximum potential.